Huh? Right. Okay. So please do start. Um, okay. Good night, friends and Wamel. Uh, today I want to present about uh, hexaquery and the five big theory from McCray. Yeah, I forgot uh, the first. I want to explain about hexaquery from Aston and Lee. Uh, the first is hexaco is uh, there's H E X A N C N O. There is uh there is a meaning from oh, one word. Uh, the first is H. H is honesty and why? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, I have to zoom my. Berarti keluar dulu dong. Wah, bro. Oh, ini ya. Can can you see clearly or no? Bisa, bisa, bisa. Okay. Um, and then the first one is H is honesty and humility. Uh, what is a honesty and humility? Uh, honesty and humility is tendency. Uh, someone to be fair and genuine in dealing with other people. Uh, maybe by like uh, cooperating with others, uh, even when uh, one, the one person has the opportunity to exploit them without suffering consequences. And then the second is, uh, there's A for emotional control. Uh, it called by emotionally, like it's okay. Uh, emotionally, it's about tendencies, uh, people to associate it with uh, like some empathy uh, or emotional, emotional attachment with other people and then the next is there is x for extroversion uh this tendency is people to become injured in in there's maybe in the like social groups uh like you have to so socializing with other people you can leading or also entertaining yourself okay uh, the next is a for agree agreeableness yes uh, this is uh, the tendency people to uh, maybe like forgiving someone or, or to tolerant with other people uh, and also cooperative with the other people in your circle um, and the fourth one is oh, and then the fifth one is C for consci conscientiousness what the conscientiousness is uh, the tendencies of people usually to uh, engage in what is mean like uh, working, working and also planning uh, for to organism. Okay, kalian tuh bisa kerja uh, atau planning di sesuatu organisasi kalian kayak gitu. Um, and the last is O for op openness to experience. Uh, this tendency is become uh, engaged with your idea, with your brain and your idea. It's like you learning something, you uh, thinking about something, and you imagining about something like this. Uh, if you have, 
high score in honesty and humility, you become it. maybe in sincerity, great avoidance, and etc. You can see in in this. Yeah, and then the next is if you have a uh, high emotionally, is you 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 can get anxiety, dependence, fearfulness. Nah, if you have a uh, high extraversion, is you can maybe you come to the sociability, you can life liveliness gitu. And the next is you have in if you have a high a group a degree of blindness, you have a more forgiveness with other people, you more passion with another people. And then if you have a high four C is you can more diligent, you can more perfection and etc. And the last is if you have high score in O, you have uh, more uh, maybe you can explore your creativity more than others uh, so it's enough from Hetseku theory and I will next to big five theory uh, uh, there is this is a make Ray and Costas theory about big five theory uh, you can call ocean like the first word is openness the second is conscientiousness the, the third is extroversion the fourth is agreeableness and the last is neuroticism uh, the first i will explain about openness first uh, what is the openness? The openness is uh, a people uh, like you. You you learn about the new things or the new experience. Uh, when you high you have high score in openness, you can uh, more like enjoy uh, enjoy learn some new thing like like that and then the conscientiousness is uh when when you have high score in this you can more uh maybe you can more reliable and prom uh yeah uh like you can easily get organized with other people you can uh can uh kayak membaur dengan mudah gitu sama teman-teman kalian kayak gitu and the third is extraversion is uh this is uh the way uh kita kayak berinteraksi dengan orang lain gitu Kayak, uh, you have you have tolerant with people you have a uh, patient with people like pokoknya kayak gimana kalian itu uh, ber bersosialisasi dengan orang lain kayak gitu and then the the next is agreeableness is uh, if you have high score in this you more uh friendly you more be cooperative people uh you can be more maybe compassionate with uh, another people like that and then the neuroticism is about uh you can call maybe like emotionally stability uh in this part uh if you have high score in neuroticism uh uh oh yeah 
people become uh, emosinya itu negatif dan kayak bisa juga nggak stabil kayak gitu. Nah, uh, biasanya openness itu uh, is you, if you have high score in openness, you will be a open-minded person. You will be a challenging person, and then the the next is if you have a high score in C. Uh, you will be more self-disciplined and organizes organization persons like that. Maybe it's enough, and you all guys, you want to ask something or discuss something? All right. So thank you very much, Diva, for the knowledge dissemination part that you have done quite very well. So um, maybe I'll give you some quick recap about this uh, theory because this one this particular theory is very extremely important because we research a psychologist for example we use five-factor model uh, quite a lot and we use that as uh, as the manifestation of how we uh, try to correlate uh, personality with with a lot of psychological constructs so basically this one this this particular theory uh, is the most well-known and more stable theory compared to other personality theories. So um, before I start to give you some very quick recap, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask if you have any questions at all. Um, before that, uh, I need you also to remember what you have learned from the last session. If I'm not mistaken, it's related with Asang, no? Yeah, Asang personality theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because actually uh, both Hexaco and also five-factor model has a deep relation with Asang uh, personality theory because most of the uh, most of that dimensions actually comes from uh, the early uh, the early thoughts uh, from Asang when he proposes the idea of pers human personality. So. Um, this is the big cluster in personality psychology that we call trait uh, theory. Yeah, so not typology, but trait theory. So we believe that mm -hmm. uh, some people has um, has different degree with the same trait, but different degree of of of, of these traits, different combination of these uh, traits. So let me start with the quick recap. Um, right. So I'll come with the yes. So um, can you see my have you seen my um, my screen yeah, yeah, yeah. now? Yeah? yeah. Right. Yes. So I'll close this. So to give you a clearer look. Uh, so basically, the theory. So wh how these people came up with the idea that personality, human personality, actually consists of uh, different dimensions. It's actually um, uh, has deep relation with the development of the use of statistical theory, statistical methods in psychology. So they actually extract how people describe their own personality and they try to categorize this description by using a analysis that we call factor analysis. I'm not very sure whether you have heard about this method, but it's this is very, very prominent method in psychology. So this particular method basically try to help the researcher to, cut, to classify uh, and to identify the pattern yeah, between chaotic and large data set, I would say. So this is basically a realistic description of human personality. So, and then what the researchers did back then was they tried to classify this description and they found that uh, those description actually uh, could be classified into five different dimensions. Does that make sense? Yeah, to you? So they use this a method that they call um, factor analytic method. And um, Mac, uh, Robert McRae and also Paul Costa back then, they found that uh, actually human personality actually consisted more, uh, more dimensions than a Seng was firstly proposed. So he added, uh, and, and they said that a Seng had a very, it's a too few dimensions and cattle with, the, with his 16 personality factor it 
it's just too much. They, we need to be more specific in describing the human personality. So what they did was basically um, they tried to expand yeah, ASAN pers uh, personality theory and simplify on the same side, they tried to simplify Carroll uh, personality theory. And then that, that's why they came up with uh, five different, uh, different dimensions. The first one would be neuroticism, extraversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. So the easiest way to remember these, these factors uh, is by you know, making an acronym. So, um, so some people would give acronym as OCEAN. So openness, conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness and neuroticism so it's ocean yeah and this yeah, yeah this um this this particular theory has quite robust um and consistently uh, found it, researchers uh, found uh, consistent evidence across nations so even though there are some differences between culture and i'll give you uh, some details after this um even though it's stable across the nation some uh, some culture would uh, would describe that one dimension is more important than another. So that would be the, the differences, where the differences lies yeah, between nation. And the most importantly is, the, is asking, is answering uh, the million dollar questions that is how to measure personality. And a uh, five factor model give a quite robust answer about how we could actually measure personality. This is the this is the million a million dollar answer that people try to solve. So basically, there are lots of ways, there are lots of options according to this model, uh, how actually personality theory could be measured. So you can use self rating. So basically, you ask uh, you ask the person to try to observe and analyze themselves, assess themselves, or we could do objective tests as you might have in 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 a normal tests. Yeah. Uh, in the OTS test, for, for example, or maybe you can, we can do also, uh, we, we ask someone to observe, yeah, to observe one's behavior and they, then they will evaluate those behavior into, into like a number of checklists. And actually, Mekre and Costa came up with a new personality test that they called Mayo Personality Inventory, but this particular inventory is no longer usable, I would say. And people have developed a quite um, extensive measurement of personality based on this model. So the, the, the inventory that I saw most used is the Big Five inventory or BFI, if I'm mistaken. And it consists of a number of items. And I'll give you the link and you can try it yourself if you are interested to do so. And also what I think quite interesting is that they try to combine the idea that personality, human personality, some part of it uh, are influenced by hereditary component. It means that you have no control over uh, what happens to yourself, but some dimensions are actually more influenced by uh, more like environmental, uh, in, uh, environment, environmental or maybe social uh, aspects of your relationships. So the, the one component that I know in some research, it says quite, uh, consistently, uh, is that neuroticism? Yeah, neuroticism is the 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 the, the most uh, consistent dimension that happens in every research. That have the evidence that this is something that uh, that that is related, strongly related to hereditary. But the other um, the other factors actually, the result is not very consistent. But agreeableness, on the other hand, it's quite consistent that. This dimension is more influenced by the environment rather than hereditary, so which is quite interesting. Uh, if you are interested in in how a big five uh, personality or five factor model personality theory evolved, I could give you some extensive readings. So if you are if you aspire to be a personality psychologist in the future, I would give you a bunch of uh, readings, additional readings that you that you could optionally. Uh, read by yourself in order to uh, deeply understand what this actually what this model actually uh, tries to explain and also um, uh, there are some research that try to confirm uh, the relation between uh, these dimensions of personality with 
other psychological components. So some research says that openness would have a quite positive correlation with intelligence, which means that if someone has more um, positive or stronger openness, yeah, then it would be it would have also relationship with with their intelligence, which means more openness more openness would be associated with more intelligence, more intelligence higher score of intelligence. And also um, there are some similarities between those uh, dimensions with prior concepts of human personality. For example, if you see the description of agreeableness, it is quite uh, similar to how uh, Adler, uh, how Adler uh, says about social interest. So that's why it's understandable why agreeableness has strong environmental component than hereditary because it has it consists it, it's actually it conveys the idea that well it's it's social orientation basically so how we actually act in 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 social context. So uh, the, I think this part has been uh, covered by Difa. So um, this different dimension they have different um descriptions so so basically if you have higher tendency of narraticism it would it would so you will have you will see more of this description in 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 this people in this in, in the behavior for example uh, people with higher narraticism they would be more apparently they more worried about things and feel in, insecure more often feel nervous or even uh kind of highly strong for example and if you have someone with higher tendency of extraversion, they, they appear to be more sociable, talkative, they enjoy to be the center of interests, and they are more affectionate and fun-loading. Or some people may have higher score in openness, and they would came across, come across as a person who is independent, creative, original, for example. And someone who has higher tendency in agreeableness, of course, they would, they would be more calm. They would be more willing to compromise with others. I would say, and people with higher conscientiousness. This is some someone that you, that you that you see if they they are reliable, whether they are hardworking, if they are organized, or perhaps careful. And some research. It's very rich and extensive research in this five factor model. So you would see that there are lots of things that. Uh, that tries to connect, tries to uh, um, uh, social psychologists. They try to explain why people behave differently, or might have different life satisfaction, or may, or might have different um, ways to cope with stress, for example. And they use personality as the as an explanation why people different, yeah, respond differently in in the same social context. So, for example, if or one research says that if uh, that someone with high conscientiousness, high agreeableness, and high openness, and extraversion, they, this is the last part, they would be more popular, they would be judged more attractive by their peers, and they get good grades, and they cope well with stress, and be a good parent, and prefer dogs over cats. I don't know if this is something that, whether this is important notion or not, but research says that, that people who prefer dogs over than cats then they would be more lovely and livable person than than someone who loves cats well this is very debatable i would say and as i said that even though this pattern of behavior pattern of human personality uh has been uh has been found consistent across nations there are different uh, uh different emphasis i would say in different nations because some culture would see one dimension is more important than the other. For example, in uh, Australians, they consider extraversion and agreeableness to be more desirable than other, the other three, but maybe someone from quite collective and tight culture, like Japanese or Indonesian, for example, uh, they would consider conscientiousness is more important because, you know, well, conscientiousness, higher score of conscientiousness means that people would uh, be more willing to, to, um, to comply 
with the social regulations and they would be more considerate when it comes to social interaction. This is something that is very important in people who lives in a collective culture. And gender differences, there are also gender differences, yeah, even though it's quite uh, general in every human, basically in a cross nation, but there are differences in which um, there are some research that has been, that was carried out in 55 countries. Uh, they found that women report higher level of neuroticism, extraversion, agreeableness, and conscientiousness than men. So the only uh, dimension that men scored higher than women is that, what is it? It's openness, yeah? So openness, the is the only dimension where men scores higher than women, which is quite interesting because I smell sexism in there, which perhaps leads to the discussion that maybe men is more intelligent than women, which is quite devastating if the conclusion would lead to that way. And also, um, they found a pattern of differences between prosperous and egalitarian nation where women had a greater opportunity for education and employment. So these differences be between men and women, um, strangely, it's more vivid, it's more pronounced, it's more of, uh, it's more clear, it's clearer than, it's clearer in a prosperous and agile nations than, um, than the last one, which is quite interesting in that way. And also, uh, this, is, this, is very, this is also very uh, important questions, whether actually human personality is stable over time or it actually could change over time. So um, uh, research says that um, this five factor could be found both in children and in the adult time, but it is quite stable, yeah. So uh, a longitudinal research that tried to compare uh, this pattern of human personality within six year period, it says that there is a high level of stability. So if you uh, show a score, a show's lower score of extraversion, we would say that it would consist in over time, which is quite good because uh, some measurement, some personality measurement could not prove themselves, could not prove that their measurement is consistent. So we could not actually try to, uh, we could not have the evidence that uh, if human personality persists, because the definition itself of human personality that it's a pattern of behavior that's stable over time. So of course, if, if a theory cannot prove that there is a degree of stability, then I'm not sure whether it, it could be trusted or not. And also a large scale of research, it says that um, that neuroticism, extraversion, and openness, those three dimensions, it, ha it, it, is, it, it shows trend that it is decreased when you reach 60s, while agreeableness and conscientiousness would rise higher in that, uh, in that period of time, which is quite, um, makes sense, I would say. <laughs> and also Hexaco is basically, it is developed uh, with the same method as five-factor model, um, but it's less popular than five-factor, even though um, actually it has quite good evidence um, uh, when we tr when 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 the researcher tried to find the evidence whether whether those uh, dimensions actually exist in reality, and they found actually they found uh, quite robust, and they're very confident that it happens uh, in the reality. But uh, they add one um, uh, important factors that is honesty and humility. Uh, so they, they basically, um, uh, hexaco model, they try to expand the uh, five-factor model by describing, uh, the, by describing the tendency or a pattern of behavior when someone has a lower score or higher score in each dimensions. So for example, if you have lower dimension, a lower score in emotionality, then you would be, you would be, you would, uh, you would be more likely to appear more emotional, more oversensitive, faithful, and more anxious. But if you have higher score or emotionality, for example, then you will 
you, you will be more likely to, to appear brave, tough, or self-assured or stable. So that would be the, uh, the slight differences with, uh, with the five factor. And also some says that, well, uh, this hexaco model, it's not easy to measure because the infantry, the, the scale that they use to measure personality, it consists of an, tons of uh, items, 100 items of, 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 of inventory, which is quite, um, which is extremely exhausting for someone who has to use their scale. And yeah, so that's why it's not quite preferable compared to the uh, five factor model. It's very compact and easier to measure than hexaco. So that's why it's less popular than the, uh, than the big five, uh, than the five factor model. Um, so that would be it, I guess. So if you have any questions, please do ask it now. No questions? Oh, me maybe, but sure, yeah, please do. Berarti kalau misalkan kita disuruh pilih duluan kita harus pakai yang mana itu berarti pakai yang B5 theory dulu. So um, it actually depends on um, uh, on the, uh, it depends on uh, the need of your research. So what actually you try to prove here yeah, in in your research question. So what are you trying to look for? So if you are trying to look for a concise and compact scientifically based uh, personality measurement, I would say go with big five. Yeah, and big five uh, in five factor model, uh, there are lots of options that you can use. It's not only the BFI itself, yeah, bahkan um, um, ada juga IPPI, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, the, uh, it's other inventory theory that is more compact and more reliable than BFI, but BFI is widely used than, uh, than even, even than the neo personality inventory. Uh, the original inventory made by uh, Mekre and Costa, yeah? so the, the the founder of this theory. So uh, my, my my answer would be, it depends. Yeah, it depends on your research questions. So what are you trying to prove in your research? So if you're try if you're looking for a compact, easy to use, and practical uh, measurement, then go with Big Five, then the hexaco. But I saw some researchers they use. A very specific dimension only. For example, um, I have a Scripsy, Scripsy student, um, and she just had the defense last week. So her research uh, was about, uh, she tried to connect the idea whether people who has higher level of conscientiousness, they would be more likely to confront people who violate the norms. Yeah, mm. so she only used a very specific dimension of a uh, five factor model. So she doesn't use the, she, she didn't use Under all dimensions of the five factor model, only one specific uh, dimension that relates to their, uh, that relates to her uh, research question. So again, it depends. Yeah. Any questions at all? Yeah, sure. Please do. Uh, I'm asking about uh, the, uh, for a more, Clear view, yeah, Bu. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the aim of categorizing in every uh, personality theory? Like, it most of them are categorizing people into some several uh, several categories. Uh, why why it should be like that? What what is the aim? Thank I think you. that's a very excellent. That's excellent questions. Yeah. So um, are there. As I told you at the first uh, at the first meeting, there are two different disagreement between uh, research person uh, between personality psychologists. Uh, some of them would have an obsession to classify people, so they try to type they try to drop people into different categories. So that's why that's we what we call the typology approach. So they try to classify the people instead of the dimension of the personality itself. So the biggest critic of this approach is that instead of categorizing people, which just doesn't make sense, you cannot classify people into different categories. So if you try to classify everyone in the world within different sets of categories, then you need like thousands or millions different categories. Yeah, because it's the variation is wide, extremely wide. So instead of classifying people into different boxes of personality, we try to understand the personality itself. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So what people you what people try to do now uh, by uh, 
proposing trait theory, they try to understand the personality, not classifying people, but trying to understanding. Right. So I need you. I need to to enter anak saya ke toilet. So I'll be yes, back in five okay. minutes. I'm really. I'm. Yeah. I'm. I'm deeply sorry for this. I'm. I'm extremely okay. sorry, but this is something that I have. I have to do. So I'll be back in five minutes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for like. Yeah. So I'm going. I'm going to record all the session and upload it on YouTube. So if you need to rewatch. Uh, all my explanation or maybe the whole session at all then you can do it on youtube with uh, less data use of course yeah any questions at all Nggak ada? right so buat yang filman kemarin eh filman apa filmu sorry filmu so we still have one meeting for filmu and i'm thinking to do it langsung aja besok minggu depan hari selasa So I'm going to explain you neopositivism sama saya lupa apa yang minggu depan. So I'm going to do that uh, on one meeting to make it more um, to make it more flex, uh, flexible and compact and efficient at the same time. So um, well, untuk metodenya, I would say kita mungkin lebih baik kayak semacam um, well, it's 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 really hard. I sh I should admit. Um, harus ngajar filmu online sangat sulit sekali. But I'm I'm trying to figure out because I have still like a few next uh, uh, the next few days. I need to figure out how to do it. Yeah, uh, on online uh, on this um, platform. So have you any? Do you have any questions before I end this meeting? Berarti uh, tetap ganti-ganti ya bu pengajarnya. Bagaimana? Enggak, langsung aja kita jadikan satu minggu depan. Hari Selasa pada jam ah, hari Selasa jam 9 ya? Oh, no, 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 no. Ini pengajar ini tetap oh untuk pengajar um, kayaknya sih akan sesuai dengan jadwal yang sudah dibuat. Um, kalau nanti, nah ini dia memang yang agak sulit adalah setiap dosen itu they have different um, approach ya kadang-kadang dan mungkin kalau saya pakai oh. zoom saya prefer lebih pakai zoom karena saya bisa rekam dan saya bisa unggah itu di YouTube. Sedangkan kalau di BBB itu nggak bisa, saya nggak bisa ambil rekamannya untuk diunggah di YouTube, itu yang jadi masalah. Tapi uh, kalau misalnya dosen yang lain mungkin akan menggunakan BBB. Nanti, um, I'm not sure, are you familiar with screen recording things? No? Iya. Yeah. Iya, yeah, familiar sama screen recording, mungkin to help your friends, ya. Yeah. Mungkin ketika dosen menggunakan BBB, I think it's, it would be better if you do the screen recording, And you, then you can distribute to to your to your friends ya karena memang kalau pakai BBB uh, dosen itu nggak bisa ambil rekamannya untuk diunggah makanya kenapa saya pakai zoom uh, ini kan karena lebih mudah bahkan ada beberapa kelas itu yang saya kasih cuman audionya doang soalnya teman-teman kalian kan ada yang sama sekali mungkin sangat parah mungkin kon, apa koneksi internet yang udah pada pulang ke desa dan sebagainya kan harus dipikirin juga nah hmm. itu mungkin yang bisa saya sampaikan any questions at all tidak ada Bu, untuk filmmu jam 8 pagi. Uh, filmmu jam 9 aja. Kita bisa jam 9. Jadi kalian, oh, so you have longer time to sleep, ya? Yeah? So, so ya, yeah, jam 8. Karena saya juga mesti siap-siap, harus ma apa, masakin sarapan dan sebagainya. Jadi jam 9 would be ideal dan jam 8. Eh, jam 9 would be ideal dan jam 8. Oke, okay. any questions? Nggak ada? Oke, okay, thank you very much for coming. I'm really sorry for the inconvenience and very short notice. So I'm very grateful that you are kind enough to let me change the schedule. So I hope you stay safe and keep the physical distance in a healthy way. And if you have any questions, please do ask me 24-7. I'll be available because that that's the beauty of working from home. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I will be available 24-7. Uh, terima kasih banyak. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.